What's up guys, Spinfire Arms here, and if you don't like the Glock 26, peace out. If you don't like my Glock 26 videos, the door's that way. Anyways, whenever I make a Glock 26 video now, I, I get a bunch of hate. And it's like, just don't watch it. If you don't like firearms, just, in general, just don't watch it. If you don't like the Glock 26, don't watch it. If you don't like the channel, don't watch it. I've even offered you guys, I'll block you if you want. That way you never have to see this channel ever again, that's fine. I don't... It doesn't bother me. It doesn't affect me. Of course, I want people to watch, but if they don't like what I'm putting out, then I don't want them to watch. It's, it's fine. I like the community that I have right now. I would be perfectly fine at 30,000 subscribers the rest of my life because I have a good group of people. We all get along. Sometimes we disagree, but at least we're respectful with each other. Now, Glock 26. If you look on at influencers' channels, if you look all over YouTube and Glock 26 videos, a lot are coming out talking down on the Glock 26, saying it's obsolete and so on. And that's only happened since, if you look at the dates on these videos, really since I started the channel. Now, it could be coincidence, or it could be the fact that I always talk about the Glock 26, and I have 2,500 videos up on YouTube where a lot of them are about the Glock 26. Now, is it true that it's obsolete? And you can look at this from a bunch of different directions, and I'm only going to speak from fact, not opinion here. Is it obsolete? Yes, it's a thick boy. The Glock 26 is a thick, a thick firearm. A lot of Glocks are, except for the Slim series, 43X, 43, 48, and 42. Is it a good firearm? Yes. Is it reliable? Yes, it is. I saw one of these videos talk about how it's 90s technology, and that's fine, but here's the thing. A lot of the stuff we use to this day, not just firearms, is 90s technology. When it comes to firearms, there's nothing wrong with 90s technology. The Glocks that are being used are 90s technology. The safe action system, 90s and 80s technology. There's nothing wrong with that. Like, if it runs, if it's reliable, if it doesn't go off in your holster, then what more can you ask for? And on top of that, they're like, oh, it's, you know, like the weight. And I'm like, okay. Well, people carry full size. People carry compacts. People carry massive firearms. People carry the Glock 30 with a full, you know, magazine of 230 grain, 45 ACP ammo. That's heavy. Um, people carry the XDM with a full magazine. That's heavy. The Glock 26 is somewhere in the middle. Now, is there something wrong with heavy? There is to a point when you have to pull your pants up more and so on, but with the Glock 26's size, its weight isn't really that heavy when you really look at it. And on top of that, weight is a good thing in a lot of cases. That's why the Glock 30 is such a smooth shooting firearm in 45 ACP is the slide is heavy. And so in the Glock 26, same thing with recoil control. That weight really does help manage recoil. And a lot of people are gonna say, oh, the grip right so glock designed the finger grooves to match up with majority of men's hands that that's just how it is that's what they targeted it would make no sense to only do 10 percent of men's hands who have the biggest hands in the world we're going to sell a firearm that only fits their hands that that's not how it is you go with the majority and that's what they did so for more majority of the people their fingers will fit the finger grooves i like the finger grooves um for the other you know small percentage of people they won't like them and that's where the gen 5 comes in but anyways, on the Gen 3, I like the finger groups. Now, people always say, why do you, you know, if you throw a 15-round mag in there, why do you carry it like that? Well, I like having shorter barrel firearms because I don't like jabbing myself with my firearm all day. I like to be able to bend over, tie my shoes. I like to be able to sit there comfortably and so on. And so I think that having a 3.4-inch barrel is, like, perfect almost because it's not a 3-inch, which I don't mind 3-inch barrels, but it's somewhere in between a 4-inch and 3-inch, which is perfect in my opinion. I think the Glock 26 is like the perfect size carry firearm. Yes, it is a little thick, but that's manageable with a good holster or a wedge. Um, but the biggest thing about it is that I always go back to is the ease of cleaning. Um, if a part goes out, the ease of being able to get a new part for it, um, and just the track record of Glock. On top of that, the number one argue is how versatile it is. The fact that you can throw a 33 round magazine in this thing, and it being this small, is amazing. Now right here I'm carrying with 15 rounds, and so people always say, why don't you get the Glock 19? And I do have a Glock 19, I love the Glock 19, but for everyday carry and being active, I like shorter barrels, shorter slides, and so on. Now is it obsolete compared to stuff like the Hellcat, the P365, the X Macro, and the Shield Plus? And I guess you could say, in a way, yeah, because when it comes down to magazine capacity for how wide it is and how heavy it is, yeah, those are definitely dominating it. But then it, you can go right back to the shootability. Does this outshoot the P365? Does this outshoot the Hellcat? Is it less snappy than the 43X? And the answer to all that is yes. Is it less snappy than the Shield Plus? Yes. Do Glocks have the best trigger? No, they don't. 
Do they have a good trigger for everyday carry? In my opinion, yes. When I'm carrying, I don't want something that's too light. And I mean, I, the SIG triggers are amazing. Let's just be honest. Um, I have no problem with those triggers either. But to me, I just like the trigger on the Glock because it's not too light. And on top of that, if you have a bunch of Glocks, it's going to be dang near the same trigger across the whole entire line. And I like that. I like being able to go back to it and it feels second nature no matter what I pick up. Now, when it comes down to it though, I don't think any firearm is necessarily obsolete. You could even say that about a high point. It plays a role. Now, a lot of firearms are role players, right? So in, in basketball, you know, you have your stars, right? You have your Steph Curry's, you know, your Clay Thompson's, but you have these role players like a Draymond Green. Now, you may not like Draymond Green's antics, but he's a he makes people better. He may only average six or seven points, but he's also getting 10 rebounds. He's also getting seven assists. His defensive presence is great. For only being 6'6", and he's guarding some of the biggest people in the league and doing a good job of it, that's a role player. My favorite player of all time from basketball is Tayshaun Prince. You probably never heard of him, but being from Detroit, he was on the championship team when I lived there. And just seeing the, the, you know, the role he played and the effect it had on his team. No, he didn't average the most points. He, didn't, I don't, he wasn't the best at anything, but what he did is he played his role. He had to guard the best player on every team. He had to guard Kobe's, LeBron's, you know, and so on. And he did it in an amazing way. His most famous moment is his block on Reggie Miller, which basically what allowed us to continue through the playoffs and win that championship. Reggie Miller had an easy, wide-open layup out of nowhere. Six foot nine, Tayshaun Prince comes out of nowhere, swats it off the glass. And it was the most amazing moment. And that's what the Glock 26 is to me. It's a Tayshaun Prince, right? It's not the best at anything, but it shows up when you need it. It's reliable when you need it. it. It's not the best at anything, but it's good at everything. And that's exactly how I look at the Glock 26. Now, it may not fit your hands. It may be too thick for you to carry without printing. The finger grooves may not fit your hand. You know, there's, there's a lot of reasons why the fire may not work for you, but you can't call the Glock 26 obsolete, especially when all these PCCs and stuff like that out here are using Glock mags. Um, because that, once again, magazine compatibility, um, parts compatibility. The fact that I can take majority of my Glock 19 parts and throw it in my 26 if I had to for some reason is absolutely amazing. Um, like I said, Glock 26 is definitely the Tayshaun Prince of firearms, and there's nothing wrong with firearms like that. There's nothing wrong with the firearm that works for you. And on top of that, if you look under these videos, it's very interesting. I'm even in the comments, but I'm being respectful, of course. I'm just stating my, you know, my place when it comes to Glock 26. These comments have 200 likes, 150 likes, 30 likes, and they're all saying the Glock 26 is not obsolete. Do you guys know how many police officers carry Glock 26 as a backup? Actually, funny story. I'm not going to say names, but we go to Sedona every year in Arizona. And last year, we met up with some of my family friends. And one of them is a police officer who carries a Glock 19 for everyday carry, or I mean for um, duty. And when he came out there, we were both carrying. Of course, I have my 26 on me in Arizona. And I just said, I asked him, you know, what do you carry for duty? And he said what he said. I'm like, I guarantee you right now you're carrying a Glock 26. And he goes, you nailed it. Glock 26 is what he had on. And I'm like, how long have you used it for? He's like, years and years and years. It saved his life at times and so on. Also in all these comments, you see all these people talking about how their, you know, their backup duty weapon is a Glock 26 or that the 26 has always been there for them or they bought it in 2000 and have never changed up their carry option. And that's because, like I said, it's a role player. It, it plays its role perfectly. And the great thing is it's also a transformer. The Glock 26 can transform into so many things, right? You can throw that 10 round mag in, pocket carry. 15 round Glock 19 mag, you know, just regular everyday carry. 33 round mag, range fun or home defense, even if you wanted to. Yes, it doesn't have a rail, I get that. But there are lights that do, you know, fit on the trigger guard and they're not the best lights, but they are light. But on top of that, you can throw a Glock 19 slide on a Glock 26. You just need a little um, spacer, basically, if you don't want stuff to be able to get in there. You can transform this thing into any type of firearm. You can use it for literally home, to literally anything, and it can flex into that role without a problem. And the best thing is, while flexing into those roles, it's reliable. I know whenever I make a video with a Glock 26 with a drum magazine or 33 round mag, ex extended mag, it looks silly. But the point is, it's reliable, and that's really what matters. Um, you can have the ugliest looking firearm, but it's reliable. I would carry it. And the Glock 26 to me is just, 
It's that perfect middle ground. It's not the superstar. It's not the bench player. It's that role player that's, you know, not necessarily shining. It's not doing everything in the world. But you notice its effect it has on the rest of, you know, in this case, Carrie or the rest of the team. You notice that it comes through when you need it. You notice that it has a really hard assignment, but it never lets you down. And that's the Glock 26 to me. Thanks for watching.